Hi, I'm Jackie, and welcome to another episode of Hearth and Apron. Today I have another Outlander special with, for you with two brand new recipes. We're going to be making a potato leek soup based off the events in Dragonfly and Amber, aka Book 2 or Season 2. And what happens is Claire tells Jenny and the people at Lollybrock that they need to grow potatoes. And when they get their potatoes, they don't honestly really know what to do with them. So Claire shows them how to make cockaleeky soup, I believe is what they called it in the book. But basically they have leeks, potatoes, and chicken. And they make a soup to feed all the tenants in Lollybrock. And I thought that that would be an awesome Scottish meal to help try to make for you. And I'm gonna show you my version up next. No one needs to see me take this hen apart. Right now I'm going to chop up some onions and shallots and they're going to be added to my Instapot. It doesn't really matter how much of the thing is chopped up or if it's fine or if I even leave the skins on because everything that I'm adding right now is actually going to get strained out once the broth is done. As you can see, I just added a little bit of astragalus root, and I do that in my bone broth because it takes a long time to get the nutrients out of astragalus. Once I filled it up to, with its water and everything is in the pot, I'm going to throw it into the Instapot on pressure cooker for two hours. Don't forget to make sure to have your release valve put back so that you're not wasting your time. Okay, so I went ahead and sifted out the broth and set it aside off screen because I needed to use this Instapot yet again. We're going to chop these leeks up ultra fine because it's going to make it easier when we go to blend them later. And we're just going to add them to the bottom of the Instapot. And once I'm done cutting up all these leeks, we're going to add about half a stick of butter and I'm going to let them saute in the Instapot for about 10 minutes. And while that's sauteing, I'm going to chop up some more veggies to add to it, including some onion and garlic, which are going to be added at that 10 minute mark for about three to five minutes in addition. I am so sorry, my screen is shaking. I was trying to use a different kind of stand and every time that I moved or chopped on my island, it was moving my screen. I didn't realize until later, I'm really sorry about that and I won't be using this this way again. So right now I'm going to go ahead and prepare my garlic. I like to use the bottom of my cutting board in that way and kind of just push down on it because it makes it really easy to get all the different cloves off of the garlic. And then of course I'm going to smush them with my knife because it helps to release all the juices and the wonderful garlic flavor. And I'm going to mince these as well. And then I'm also going to cut up a shallot and mince them to add to my pot. Have you ever made a type of potato and leek soup before? If so, tell me, did you like it? Did you do something different? Tell me about it in the comments. I'd love to hear any tips you have. Now I'm going to gather all of my potatoes. I do not know how many pounds of potatoes this was. I think there was a meme that best described it once that I saw. It said, I don't measure things. I just wait until I hear the whispers of my ancestors say that's enough child. Yeah, so I'm sorry. I can't tell you exactly how many this was. I can tell you that they were really small, so I used more than I normally would. And I'm gonna go ahead and peel them and dice them up and set them aside. I don't wanna put them in right away with the leeks while they're sauteing.
of you I know might be watching more for the recipes, but those of you that are watching because you're Outlander fans too, what have you been thinking about this new season? I have to say that last episode showing the trauma of Roger did an outstanding job at encompassing PTSD in a way that I think very few get to see it. And, you know, it totally pressed my triggers. They did an outstanding job. And I think they did it in a way without having Roger lamenting in his sorrow for so long that it, it made people annoyed. So, speaking of Outlander, who is your favorite character in the books and in the movies? I have to say, I think mine has slowly become Brianna. I love the way that she looks at life and she's just, she doesn't take any shit from anybody, but she also just makes the best of every situation. And so yeah, I'd have to say Brianna's my favorite. I want to hear in the comments, who's your favorite? Who really inspires you on the show and makes you think of things just a little bit differently? Once my onion, garlics, and leeks are sauteed, we're going to go ahead and add the broth and the potatoes and close it up for seven minutes on high pressure. Yes, you heard that right, seven minutes. That's all the time that it takes. Then we're going to go ahead and spoon it in to this blender once it's all done. An immersion blender would be better, but I don't have one. Pro tip here, make sure that you make sure your lid top is all the way on. I had the lid on, but the clear part on top was obviously not right. And as you can see, I made a delightful mess all over myself and my kitchen. I'm going to go ahead and keep putting this into the blender until all of the little pieces are in and chopped up and fine. And like I said, that's because my family likes to have more of a bisque style soup when we eat. My daughter is loves to eat these kind of soups, but she really doesn't want to have a giant leek to chew on. Um, she likes the flavor, but not the texture. So we like to make sure things are blended up. And once this is all done, I'm going to add this into my pot on the stove. You can put it back in the Instapot. I just was avoiding that extra step of cleaning it yet again. We're going to add a little bit of milk, let it cook for about five minutes, and it's done and ready to go. Doesn't that look great? Okay, I hope that you really enjoyed that potato leek soup. It was even approved by my 16 year old daughter, which I feel like really says something because as she's gotten older, I swear she's gotten pickier than she was when she was little. Do you, any of you have teens? Is that something that's common? Anyways, next we are going to be making Myers Mountain Jerky. It's what I'm calling a jerky recipe because in the drums of autumn, when Jamie and Claire are trying to decide if they're gonna stay in America, Myers, a mountain man known by Jocasta, helps to show them the back country so that they can get a little bit more acquainted with it. And he also, as they decide to stay, shows them how to make what he calls jerked meat. And you can also see this featured in the season four or I believe it's season four. And anyways, I think that this jerky recipe was pretty good. I would love to hear your comments or anything else that you do with jerky. And thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe down below. We're gonna start off making a marinade for our beef jerky. In this, there's gonna be one third cup soy sauce, one third cup Worcestershire sauce, half a teaspoon of honey, a dash or an eighth of a teaspoon of liquid smoke, one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, ground pepper, and salt. Again, the garlic powder, onion, ground pepper, and salt are all one teaspoon. This makes a pretty basic flavor for your jerky. It's really good. It doesn't necessarily need embellishment, but if you like things a little bit spicier, you might want to add a little bit of cayenne or something of that nature, or maybe sprinkle a little bit of extra pepper over the top once you put it into the dehydrator. start cutting up the meat now and I'm going to use my fillet knife. We're going to sharpen it because I want to work as little as possible while I'm cutting this up and then I'm going to rinse it off and I'm going to start by cutting off all of the fat on the meat just because I really don't like extra fat 
for myself when especially in jerky it's just way too chewy and weird after that I'm going to go ahead and put this into quarter inch slices and I'm going to try to keep it as thin as possible because that's how I like my jerky and I'm going to add it to the bowl where then I'm going to add the marinade and let it sit for I'd say 6 to 12 hours. I'm going to leave mine overnight. Now you will notice I am cutting up the fat and that is because I like to set my fat in this way aside and put it into a plastic bag and I use it in one of two ways. I either use them to start like a broth uh, or I use them to make honestly pet food and that's what I'm going to do with this. I like to take and I take a little bit of the meat off with it too because obviously that fat's going to dissolve into whatever broth that I make and it leaves just a little bit extra. I do things like take the ends of my green beans and some of my sweet potato parts and things like that and I just kind of set a whole bunch aside into a gallon bag and once it's full I pull it out throw it into my crock pot overnight and then my dogs have something special to eat and I, I love to spoil my dogs because they are my fur babies and it brings me joy to see them happy. If you find yourself wondering what's up with the pink gloves, I really don't like the texture of raw meat. It grosses me out. So I have gloves that are kitchen grade that are just simply here for when I have to chop meat up. You'll actually see in some of my other episodes, I meal prep all of my meat at one time so that I use as little gloves as possible because I don't like waste, but I really dislike touching raw meat even more. So it's the next day. I'm just going to arrange all of my jerky on my dehydrator here. You can see there's multiple levels of it. And I'm just going to go ahead and leave it until I feel that it doesn't look dry anymore. I would love to give you a direct amount of time on this jerky, but I'm just not that cool. So if you can't tell, this is a very small portion of the jerky that was left. Um, it doesn't last very long in my house and my family got to the bag of jerky before I could get a picture of it that morning. I really hope that you enjoyed today's episode and that these recipes really inspired you to get into your kitchen and help to make something magical. Also, please don't forget to like and subscribe down below. I would love to have you part of my YouTube family and community. I am new to YouTube and so I'm just learning and building and I would love to have you join me in this journey.